Hi and welcome to another tutorial on 2D game design in Unity. In the previous tutorial, um, I wrote a script that you could use to make your player jump. Um, so I've got that script still open here in Mono Develop. It's the player develop player controller script, and it's attached to this ball here, which is the player in this game. So we added this script so that we could have the ability to jump in the game. But there's one problem, and the problem is that um, although we can jump, we can actually keep jumping if we just keep tapping the space button, uh, which isn't really good. So you might want that in your game, but if you just want to be able to only jump when you're touching the ground, then there's some more things we need to add to this code. So um, firstly, let's go back to the script in Mono Develop. This is the player controller script. There are a few variables that we need to create first. So up here inside the class where we've already got some existing variables, we're going to add some more variables. And um, the first one will be called a transform. So this is public transform with uppercase T. So we'll create a public transform and a transform is basically any object in the scene that can have a position, a rotation and a scale. Okay, and we can specify um, what this transform is going to be later on, but we'll create public transform and we'll call this ground check point. Okay, so that's the first variable. Second variable is going to be a float. So we'll say public float ground check radius. And the next one we'll create is going to be a layer mask public layer mask, uppercase L and uppercase M, and this will be called ground layer. Okay, and we don't need to give any of these um, values at the moment, we're just creating the actual variables. They all need to be public because we're going to go into Unity in a moment and specify what the ground check point is and what the ground check radius is and what the ground layer is. So basically, um, with these three things in our code, the ground checkpoint will be the part of the character where it's going to be, or the player, where it's going to be checking if it's on the ground or not. So that would be the bottom of the player. Um, so if it's a character, it would be at their feet. Um, but since the player or character in this game is a ball, it's going to be the bottom of the ball. And then we'll have a radius around that area. So from that point, there'll be a radius around there, which will allow within that radius to, um, to jump off the ground. And then we're going to create a ground layer, um, which will have things like the grass, the platforms, planks, anything that we're going to treat as ground or anything that the player should be allowed to jump off. We're going to add them all, all of those objects or assets to a ground layer so that we can only jump off those things and we can't just jump off uh, like another character or a bomb or something like that. Okay, so we'll save the code and leave the code at that for a moment. We'll go back into Unity. Okay, and so if you go to your character or player, so this is the ball sprite, and go down to where the script is, you'll see now that we have those variables here. So we've got ground checkpoint, ground check radius, and ground layer. So first thing we'll do is create the ground checkpoint. So on the actual player, you can right click and click on create empty to create an empty child here in the hierarchy. And just click on that to rename it and we'll call this ground check point. Okay. So this is called ground check point and it's a child of the ball sprite. So if we zoom in here, the ground checkpoint's position at the moment is in the center of the ball sprite, but we want to grab the move or transform or translate tool and move it down to the bottom of the player. So it's going to be at the bottom of the ball, right at the bottom there. Or if it, this was a character with legs, it would be at their feet. Okay, so what we're saying here is the bottom of the ball is the point at which we'll check if it's touching the ground. So we don't want to know if the center of the ball is touching the ground um, or up here, the top of the ball is touching the ground. We want to know if the bottom of the ball is touching the ground. And 
this um, well, this ball will be able to spin around, so it will always be checking the bottom of the ball. Okay, so that's the ground checkpoint. Okay, it doesn't matter what your character is, just make sure that you move the ground checkpoint down to the bottom of the actual character. All right, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing we need to do is go back to the player, the ball sprite, and now we can scroll down where it says ground checkpoint, we can just drag this ground checkpoint onto there. So we're now specifying that the position of this ground checkpoint here, which is where that little blue dot is, that's the actual point in the script that we'll be checking um, if that's touching the ground, okay? And the second thing we need to do is specify the ground check radius. Now we can actually get that from the collider. Um, it's going to be the radius of the collider because the collider is a circle which surrounds um, this ball, it's around the edge of the ball. So we can just copy this value here, the radius of the collider, and paste it here. Now, if you are using a different collider for your character, maybe you're using a box collider, then you would take the width of the collider and you would halve that and use roughly that value um, to put here where it says ground check radius. But at the moment, um, it will use this value and we might um, play around with it a little bit later on just to see um, what works best. Okay, so those are the first two variables set. Now we need to actually specify the ground layer. So in this game, we've got some wooden planks and we've got grass here. All right, so that's what the player should be allowed to jump off. I don't want the player in this game to be able to jump off the bomb or coins or anything like that. Um, I want the player only to be able to jump off the planks and the grass. So if another character comes along, they shouldn't be able to jump on the character and then jump off them as well or jump off the bomb. Just be able to jump off the ground and the planks. So what we could do is we can create a layer and add these different assets to that layer. So let's go and um, let's click on one of the planks maybe. All right. And you can see when you click on any of these assets here, we have the option here to add them to a layer and they're all just on the default layer at the moment. So we've got a few different layers here. They're all on the default layer. What we can do is add a new layer. Now there's a few layers here taken up by Unity, but down here you'll see that there's user layers that you can create yourself. So go to the first available one, which is probably user layer eight, and give it a name like ground and hit return. So there we go, we've got a new layer called ground. Now we can go back to these planks and the grass sprites, and we can go and change their layer to ground. But we, we can do it that way, but if we do it that way, it means we have to go to each individual plank and each individual piece of grass and specify its layer as ground. But we know, because these items are blue, we know that um, in one of the previous tutorials, I actually used um, prefabs. So these are all prefabs. So what I can do is go into the prefabs folder, go to the plank prefab and specify its layer as ground and do the same for the grass sprite. Change its layer to ground and I could do it for the ice sprite even though I'm not actually using that in the game anymore. It would If I did decide to drag it in, um, I'd want that to be on treated as ground as well. But I don't actually want ice in this scene so I'll just delete that. So now these, all of these prefabs have their layer set to ground. So if we go to these planks now, they're all ground and the grass, they're all ground as well. So they've all been set to whatever the prefab set to, which is great. All right, so that's one of the advantages of using prefabs is that you can easily change the layer that a, a, an item is on or an asset is on and it will apply to all of those assets um, you don't have to do them one by one. So that's great. Okay, so now what we can do we can, uh, is we can go back to the ball sprite, go down to that script, and where it says ground layer, we can change that to ground. There we go. And you can actually pick um, more than one layer. So you can see I've, I can actually tick two there, but I only want ground. So make sure that ground is the only one ticked. 
But if you did have, um, maybe you put um, other characters on a layer called characters and you did want to be able to jump off characters, then you could tick that layer as well as the ground layer. But I only want mine to jump off ground. Okay, so that's all set. We can save that. Now let's go back to the code. And this is where we're now actually going to check um, whether the ground, uh, whether the character or player is actually touching the ground. Okay, before we do that, we need to add a new variable. And this one's just going to be a private variable. And it's going to be a bool or boolean variable. So boolean data type can only have, um, only takes two possible values, either true or false. Okay, so we'll create a boolean variable called is touching ground and this can be true if um, the player is touching the ground or it can be false if the player isn't touching the ground. So now all we need to do is go down to the update method and at the on the first line inside the update method we're going to um, find out if the um, but we're going to set the is touching ground variable to either true or false based on whether um, the player is touching the ground or not. So we'll say is touching ground equals physics 2D dot overlap circle. And basically we can use an overlap circle. What this does is when we put um, add a bracket there and just press um, down cycle through, down arrow to cycle through here. What you can see is we've got vector to point, float radius, and int layer mask. So what's happening is we, um, there are three values that we can specify here separated by commas inside the brackets. The first one is the um, point in space um, of where we're um, checking the ground, right, the ground check. So that will be um, what we called this variable before, ground check point. Okay, so we can put ground check point dot position. Okay, so this is going to be ground check point dot position and then a comma. The second value is going to be um, the radius. So we can say ground check radius. And then the last value after this comma is going to be the layer mask, which is called ground layer. And we can close that bracket and uh, end that line with a semicolon. Okay, so basically what this overlap circle is going to do is it's going to check if any objects on the ground layer are within the radius from the specified point. Okay, and so this is going to equal either true or false. So it's going to equal true if ground layer objects like the planks and the grass are within the radius specified from the point, um, the ground check point that we've already specified in Unity. Okay, so if um, the player is touching the ground, this will be true. If the player is not touching the ground, this will be false. And this is checked every time the update method is called every single frame. The last thing we need to do is go back down to our if statement here. So if this if statement we created in the previous tutorial checked whether the um, spacebar button was being pressed. Um, and then if it was, we made the player jump. So we've got if input dot get button down jump. What we can do now is we can add two ampersand, which means and. So we can say if get button input dot get button down jump. So in other words, if the um, spacebar button to make it the character jump is being pressed and is touching ground is true, then we'll make the player be able to jump. So they'll only be able to jump, only be able to jump if the spacebar is being pressed and they're currently on the ground. So we could say is touching ground equals true. So we'd use two equals signs there and say equals true. But that's the same as just putting is touching ground. So this is a Boolean data type. So if we just say and is touching ground, 
it means n is touching ground is true. We don't have to say um, is touching ground equals true. Okay, so that's it. We can save the code, go back to Unity, just let that quickly compile. And we don't have any errors or anything showing up here. So now we can play this. All right, so we can move around with the left and right arrows or the A and D keys, collect a coin there. And now let's try jumping. Yeah, so we can jump. But if I keep tapping jump, um, when I'm in the air, I'm not able to jump. So that's fixed. However, there's one little problem and that's that I can't always seem to jump. I have to be perfectly on the ground. So if I'm bouncing around a little bit like this, I can't jump. I have to be really touching the ground. So to fix that, what we can do is just increase that ground check radius a little bit. So let's maybe make it 0 0.5 and run it again just to increase the radius and that's better so yeah so when I press space and I'm actually on the ground I can jump can probably still increase it a little bit let's try 0 0.7 okay so stationary I can jump yep all good uh, and if I try and jump and then keep jumping in the air, I can't jump in the air. So that's pretty good. All right, so that's basically how to um, allow a player to jump in the game without um, allowing them to jump in the air. So checking if they're touching the ground first before allowing them to jump. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.